Hey, everybody. I think I've got my wrong camera on. Another technical difficulty. Oh, my goodness. But the technical difficulties never end with this whole program. So I guess we'll just roll with the punches. Hopefully you can hear me too. I see Courtney from Nova Scotia saying she can hear me or see me. So it's good. So that means I have to get rid of this camera that's supposed to be on right now. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can disconnect this beast. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, let us get rid of the fancy camera, and then we'll just go with the laptop and see what happens. Awesome, so might be a little wonky today, but I'm making a really delicious dish, and I've been waiting to eat it because it's pretty good, and I just kind of made it up in my head, which is usually what happens with my recipes. Um, I see something online and then I kind of like make it my own or do whatever ingredients I have, which is kind of like the fun of cooking. Um, and it saves a lot of money and time and weight, food waste and stuff like that. So it's really awesome to be able to just like whip something together and um, eat something delicious with like whatever leftovers you have just based on something you saw online. So with this recipe, because Thanksgiving weekend is coming up, and we're actually, we're not going home to visit family or anything like that. So we're just staying in and having some good old fashioned vegan food. And so this recipe is gonna be a little bit like Thanksgiving flavors, which is nice because it's nice to think of different things you can eat because traditionally, if you're not vegan, you're basically eating like turkey and potatoes. And I don't wanna eat a dead turkey and potatoes are boring. So you need to be creative. So let's see if we, can get this laptop angle working um, because my camera, my fancy camera disconnected itself. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if I can get a good angle for you guys and not show you my nasty kitchen. Okay, so here we go. So it's extreme close up of the ingredients. So this is a pasta dish. And the base of the sauce is going to be actually butternut squash, which is really awesome. It's in season, it's super cheap. So this butternut squash is boiled and pureed in a food processor, but you could probably also just mash it up really good as long as you boiled the crap out of it. That's the base of the sauce. And then we have stuff like onions and garlic to give it flavor. And we're going to use salt and pepper. And then what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make sort of a meat crumble um, stuffing. So um, we have some leftover um, light life meat crumble, which is actually my favorite. The light light stuff is really good. And then I have the butt end of a loaf of bread chopped up. Just one slice because there's only two of us tonight. And then here I have oops, some... We've got a little bit of dried thyme, so it's very potent, and some sage, which is some ground sage. And you can't really see it down in here, but I have some red pepper flakes. So that is kind of like the traditional Thanksgiving flavor is the sage and the thyme. And that will give us this nice um, savory flavor. And knowing me, I didn't put it out yet, but I'll probably add some of that nutritional yeast. So hopefully you guys can see this, but we have two pans going pretty warm. They're both on medium. So the first thing we're gonna do in each pan, the small one is gonna be for like the meat crumble topping. And the other one is gonna be for the sauce. So we're gonna try to do it at the same time. So it's always good to save time. So we've got, I'm gonna do just a little bit of onions in the small pan for the, to for the topping. 
And then the rest of the onions in this pan. So you guys can kind of see inside the pan, but I think you get the point that it's onion frying. So it's nice also to use similar ingredients for your recipes too, because then it makes it a lot easier to put it together and prep for it. So you can cut, chop up these onions earlier in the day or a couple of days before and get your garlic ready. I know some people who will um, sort of mulch up their garlic and then you can keep it in a jar in the fridge and that's much better than the jarred garlic you can get in the store. Because most of that jarred garlic is just swimming in oil, which is not good for you. And actually, Frank and I watched a documentary one time about um, garlic. It's a TV series on Netflix called Rotten. And uh, a lot of that pre-made garlic is uh, comes from a pretty nasty origin. So definitely check that out. So these are getting pretty soft already, which is nice. Like chop them small. When you chop stuff small, it also cooks faster. So then what we're going to do is add the garlic. So I have like three or four cloves here. And again, I'm going to put the little amount, the smaller amount there in the topping pan and the larger amount in the soft pan. So we'll get that in there. And just, again, we're just... The basic stuff, we're cooking onions and garlic. And you just want to move that around so it doesn't burn. If you need to add a little bit of water, maybe that will help. We already have enough oil, I think, in there to get us started. But we're going to have some flavors in there soon. Awesome. So then I'm going to let these onions fry a bit more. And actually, I'm going to put some water. I'm going to put some water in this pan to deglaze it because it's getting crazy. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll take, I'm not going to use all of this actually. So this is like a whole butternut squash. I'm just going to use like most of it here, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Actually, let's do it all. Let's just do it. We'll eat it for leftovers. I'll probably even eat it for breakfast. So again, we're just gonna stir that in there with the garlic and the onions. And then we have our small pan, which now I need another spoon, is going to be our topping, right? So I'm gonna put my Light Life Crumble in here. And we're gonna put our breadcrumbs, they're gonna get nice and toasted. And we're gonna let those cook for a bit before we put our spices in. So you can stir that around while the other stuff is cooking. Awesome, so we'll let that cook down. So then the puree here is actually pretty dry, which is fine right now while it's heating up, but we're gonna give it, we're gonna give it a, a tiny bit of moisture in a second. So we also need to season this. So we do have garlic and onions, but you want to put a bit more in. So we're going to do some salt, just a little bit, and some pepper. I like a lot of pepper, so we're doing a lot of pepper. And then we've got our trusty nutritional yeast in there. And then we're going to put a bit more water. If you have um, veggie broth, uh, handy go ahead and use veggie broth but you just want to add maybe like three tablespoons to start and then we'll see how liquidy that sauce gets we don't want it watery we still want it thick and remember with our nutritional yeast that will help thicken up the sauce too and then we've got our garlic and onions cooking in there so I can see that this three tablespoons of water I think gave it enough liquid because you still want it to be thick enough to like stick to the pasta. So that's pretty good there. And then we got this going on. So that is definitely getting toasty with the bread. So I might actually turn this one up. I want, I really want the bread to get nice and toasty, like a stuffing. 
And then now we're going to put in again our sage and our thyme. And then there's uh, some red pepper flakes down in there. It looks like, looks like a little smiley face of herbs. Look at that guy. All right, he goes in. There he goes. So that's going to give us that nice flavor, but I didn't want to put all those flavorings right in the sauce because I didn't want the sage and thyme to like overpower it. I just want it to be in this stuffing stuff. So the bread you can see is getting toasty in spots. So that's exactly what you want. So it'll be nice texture if some of this the bread is uh, crispy. So that's going to be fantastic. So I'm just going to stir this. So now we have our, I'll see if I can lift you guys up here. Let's see. Let's see how fancy we can get with this. Look at that live camera action. So that's come together pretty nice. And I can see that that sauce is drying out a tiny bit again. Um, so I know that it's heated through. So we're pretty good. Awesome. So then what we do, I'm going to turn this back down. I do want this to get crispy. And I can smell the flavors out of that. It's amazing. So then what we're going to do is put our pasta right in here. So I've done some whole wheat spaghettini, which I like the thin noodles. I think the basis of this recipe was a carbonara sauce, which is usually linguine, but I like the thin noodles. So let's just put a bunch of that in there. So when I made that pasta, another really good tip is to make sure that if you're going to not use the pasta right away, is you rinse it with cold water so it doesn't stick to each other. So this in your pan is going to look like you've made like a complete failure of a meal and it looks like really mushy and weird like a spaghetti mess. But when we plate it up, it's going to be really nice. Okay. So we'll get the heat off of everything. I'm pretty much done with this spatula. And then you always have to keep your kitchen clean too. I've made like a complete mess over here. Clean that up. So now we have our bowl. That's a good shot. I think you guys can see that. And then what you want to do if you can, can manage it is get a pair of tongs. And while it's still in the pan, you know, do a bunch of twists and then you can just loosen it up and it kind of makes it look fancy. If you're just trying not to be fancy, if you don't care, just dump it in your bowl. But it's nice to also when you're cooking for yourself, make sure it looks nice. You know, so we eat with our eyes as well and the smells and everything like that. So there, I'm going to do one more little one here. Awesome. Okay, so we have our pasta in our bowl. So it does look a little bit fancy. Some cute curly cues there. And then we're going to, maybe we'll make a little space in here. Make it really nice and fancy. And then we're going to put our crispy meat crumbly, oniony, sagey meat crumble on top. And then also if you have them around, get some green onions nice and chopped to give us a little bit of color. And that again, it just makes it look more visually pleasing. And you get a nice looking dish like that. So how did we do for time? That was also a pretty easy meal here. And you guys were patient with me with my crazy camera actions. So we've got, like, look at this. And you can see the sauce is clinging to the pasta. So you know that, like, every bite you take, you're going to get some delicious, delicious flavor there. And now the my favorite part is the taste test. So let's check this out. So again, 
We have our butternut squash pasta sauce with lots of garlic and onions and some nutritional yeast. And then on the topping, we have some leftover light life meat crumble. We've got onions, garlic, bread. We've got our sage and thyme and salt and pepper and all that stuff. So let's check it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's actually so good. The butternut squash, like I love that butternut squash flavor anyway. And then to have it like all savory on a pasta is just like pure comfort food. But we're still sticking, you know, if you're watching your health, we've got whole wheat pasta, which is super nutritious and our butternut squash. Um, and right now butternut squash is in season, so it's perfect to eat. Um, man, delicious. So you have to try this. Even if you just do the butternut squash, you don't have to make the toppings, just put all your flavors in the butternut squash and then you'll get that nice sort of Thanksgiving flavored meal. And you have a big hearty meal that you can share that's cheap to make and you can make a lot of it. So you don't have to always have the same old thing for Thanksgiving. You can make the tradition being with your loved ones instead of eating certain foods. So it's super easy to make some cool stuff um, around the holidays that's vegan. So that's it. That's everything. Thanks again for watching and logging in all the time. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget to like this video. I'm going to add all the recipe and the steps in the descriptions by tomorrow. So you can always come back to the YouTube video to check it out. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Please like the video. Please share it. Tell all your friends to subscribe. Whatever you got to do, just do it and make this delicious recipe. And if you ever have, like anyone listening, if you ever have any suggestions on what I should make for a next recipe, I'm always looking for ideas. Um, sometimes they come out of my head and are delicious like this one. And sometimes I have to really think about it. So I'll love your suggestions. Okay, guys, bye. I'm going to eat this. See you later. Mm -mm -mm.